Well, hello, this is uh, <coughs> Yuris Kaja talking to you from Riga again uh, after a rather, I would say, uneventful week, uh, except for one rather bizarre uh, story that I ended up uh, discovering uh, already in the Latvian media and then picked it up and carried it over to uh, the Spanish news agency EFI, which I wrote a story for in English and they translated it. Basically, it's this. In Latvia, uh, prostitution is, technically speaking, kind of legal. It's, it's regulated under an administrative code that says you can uh, sell sexual services out of your own apartment. Uh, that is, if you own the place or you legally rent it, your neighbors don't object, and you are not within 100 meters of a place of worship or a, a school and uh, that you cannot advertise your profession or your uh, services uh, on the internet, uh, just a very limited way. You, we can, so you can sort of let it be known what you do. Uh, and if you uh, violate these regulations, then you are subject to something called an administrative fine in Latvia. It's sort of like a, a glorified uh, traffic ticket or something. It's not a crime, per se. It's a misdemeanor in the U.S. understanding of things, perhaps. So uh, what is criminally punishable, of course, is if you engage in um, recruiting minors to uh, prostitution or if you uh, run, uh, if you procure prostitution services for others, uh, sort of pimping or whatever you want to call it. Also, of course, if you want to sell sexual services, you have to be a legal adult. So given all that, uh, the Latvian government uh, has been trying to figure out whether it ought uh, not have a law uh, that generally regulates the sexual services market, perhaps even following the model of some Scandinavian countries that it pu punishes the per person who purchases such services and also that it would set up a program for getting uh, prostitutes out of the business, which is seen as exploitative and opening them up to possible uh, trafficking and so forth and so on. Uh, and that idea, that draft bill, got stuck uh, in the, the whole lawmaking process, process at some point here in Latvia. And then what happened is... The lawmaking process moved ahead to uh, pass a new code of administrative violations, which basically, uh, rather than defining, and I'm not 100% sure of this, but rather than defining the administrative violations and then the fines, it sort of defined a method of fining people for certain you know, misdemeanor type violations uh, that were defined in a umbrella law of some sort. That is to say, if you were to be fined for uh, uh, tossing trash on the street, there might be a, a environmental law uh, that says, you know, that, that is not the way you should dispose of your rubbish. And then you get fined under the administrative code. But the administrative code itself may not contain the exact rules for to define what you have done wrong. Well, what happened is now there was no general umbrella law regulating prostitution in Latvia. So, in effect, from July 1st, there has been no way of punishing anyone who uh, violates these general guidelines for uh, selling sexual services in Latvia. And the story, of course, the way to formulate that in an in a easily understood way is to say that Latvia accidentally decriminalized prostitution. And by decriminalized, I mean that it was no longer punished to do this. For, for, you know, people were not punished, cannot be punished for, for doing this. This is sort of like uh, decriminalizing uh, marijuana in some uh, countries and some states where basically... Uh, it's against the law to possess the stuff, maybe even against the law to publicly smoke it, but 
there's no penalty. I mean, in practice, there nothing is done. You know, it's like the Netherlands where you know you can get away with it. It's been going on for decades. Um, but when this headline popped up, and the story, of course, went out for me in English, it made it pretty clear that prostitution was uh, still regulated. It was not totally illegal. Uh, it was not criminalized as being totally forbidden. Uh, the headline went out that Latvia accidentally decriminalizes prostitution. It decriminalizes in the sense that it is no longer able to pub punish some of the violations of uh, the the regulatory framework for selling sexual services. So, uh, and of course, that's a, that's a kind of a headline that 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 grabs attention. Um, and uh, then the Ministry of Interior, for who had provided me with information, commented on this, and indeed their comments were also reflected in a local news agency story that essentially said the same thing that you know Latvia has sort of decriminalized certain forms of prostitution until further notice, starting from January 1st, when the new administrative sanctions code came into effect. Uh, and they were upset uh, that, well, we didn't really decriminalize anything. It's never really been fully criminalized because you could do it according to the rules and so forth and so on. Uh, and this is kind of weird because it reminds me of something that must have happened al almost nearly 20 years ago here, uh, perhaps, well, less than that, but when I wrote a, a, a story about the uh, construction of the eastern border for Latvia and, and, and that uh, uh, Siemens, the German company Siemens was going to be involved in setting up uh, certain things on the eastern border of Latvia, which I looked up on uh, the Siemens website. And there was, you know, there were sensors, there were, there were various gadgets that would uh, help one protect a border zone where you didn't have people there all the time. So I put that up. I said, well, it, probably they're setting up these, you know, motion detectors and sensors and stuff like that. It's going to be purchased by the lab. Then the day after this story came out, I was working for the local Latvian business newspaper, DNS Business at the time. I got a call from somebody who's a, an officer in the Latvian military counterintelligence service asking me, like, where the hell did you get this information? I mean, you're, you're revealing state secrets. And I said, oh, really? I mean, they're up there on the website, the Siemens website. And, I mean, you know, if I'm going to write a story about the Latvian government purchasing something or other for, uh, for the uh, better... Uh, protection of the eastern border, the, the one with Russia, well then, of course, I should at least, in general terms, define what it is that they're buying and what it, you know, who's selling it to them, and all of that was out there on the internet. Well, that sort of ended that uh, uh, discussion, uh, which was a cordial discussion, but it was kind of a shock to walk into work and the first call you get is from Latvian counterintelligence uh, saying that you are, uh, you know, breaking... Uh, uh, some kind of uh, security regime, or whatever. but it was the same thing today. Uh, I had two unanswered calls from a very nice gentleman at the uh, Ministry of Interior, which is the well, the ministry that supervises the police and law enforcement in Latvia. And I talked to him the day before, and he was a bit uh, a bit upset about the uh, this decriminalization story. And we talked about it. I said, look, you know, how, how else can we formulate it? And secondly, the text he had seen was a retranslation of a story published in Spanish with the FE logo on it uh, in a Spanish newspaper, La Vanguardia. Those of you who follow me on Facebook will know that this is where most of my FE stories appear you know, uh, that I that I often post, and, and, and they're in Spanish. So, so uh, but anyway, and that, that was sort of the, the, the kind of the amusing event of the week. Uh, otherwise, it's been quiet here. Uh, everybody uh, is going on uh, vacation, except me. I, being a semi- 
retired person, I'm always on vacation and being a freelancer, you're also sort of always, you know, not particularly working and keeping nine to five hours. So um, as for you folks back in the States, it's pretty interesting to see how the, the plague is spreading there like wildfire. And uh, at the same time, I, I've been in a dialogue with uh, an old friend of mine on, on Twitter uh, who points out that there is a, a sort of counter story to all of this, uh, you know, the, the stuff about COVID-19, uh, namely that it may not be as harmful as it is and that all of this may be a major panic and all of that kind of argument. Uh, there is a certain amount of validity, and there are certain data that seems to support that. But at the same time, uh, the question is, how do you react when you have a rapidly spreading, highly, seemingly highly infectious uh, disease, whose, all of whose manifestations are not at all clear? I mean, they haven't been scientifically. They're now being discovered, but... Uh, do you sort of sit back and let the plague sweep over us? I mean, this is what some people say. Oh, we had the we had the flu in 1968, which killed more people than you know than than have seemingly died from COVID-19 and 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 other things like that. Um, and then there's of course the kind of uh, Swedish modified herd immunity model where they really don't care much what happens. They have a relatively high death rate and and just hope that herd immunity, if it exists, uh, I would wait for the data about uh, antibody tests on the population that is actually tested positive for the disease and that has survived it before jumping to conclusions about that. Um, and uh, anyway, I, I'm, I'm sort of open to, to, to these other arguments. And, and, and there's a guy called Alex Burns, and former New York Times reporter, who sort of takes the skeptical side on this. And uh, he's worth looking at on Twitter. He he posts stuff, data seeming to say that the, the the mortality rate for COVID isn't all that bad. But we shall see. Well, we see we'll see where this goes. I mean, there's there are things that that can be you know as harmful to the economy as the alleged closing down of everything. Namely, when you have COVID infections at uh, um, Meatpacking plants that supply vast uh, proportions of uh, all the pork that's consumed in, in parts of the U.S. And we had a case like that in Germany. Uh, then, uh, you know, you end up, because you didn't protect these workers or, or were unaware of the risk, you, you end up uh, with a lack of meat. Back to the Soviet days, so to speak, from the Latvian perspective. Anyway... Uh, not much else here. The weather's gotten cooler, uh, and it's sort of sunny and nice outside. I go up there, go to the store a few times, and, uh, well, yeah, that's about it. Uh, so I shall get back to you again when something interesting happens. This is Yuris Kaja, signing off from Riga, Latvia.